Okay. It looks like we are live. How is everyone doing today? So nice to see you all again. It's been quite some time since I've been back on the stream. What's up, Dana Pride? <laughs> Coming to us from Twitter Periscope. My name is Jason Levine. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Pleasure to be back here on Premiere Pro Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter Periscope to talk to you today about um, one of my favorite things in Premiere Pro. and something which some of you may know, but maybe need a quick little refresher on. Auto Color Match, a feature that we introduced some time ago. And I'm going to take you through some of the easy steps to show you how to match shots and even shots from different references. So as always, a couple quick shout outs here. Sharice, Addison, how are you? Mubashar, Stepan, Sergit, James Burton, Russell Underhill, Mohammed, Charles Schulten, Othniel, Greg Beecher, long time no see, thank you so much, Ryan Monroe, Trevor Hansen, hey hey, Desiree, how are you? And everyone joining us over on YouTube as well, TR Boland, good to see you. Feels like a really long time, huh? I realize it's been since the end of June. And uh, I've been doing lots of other things in the meantime. Timo Ovaska, Wilco Pro, great to see you all. So let's go ahead and kick right into it. Now, this, the cool thing about this is if you're not a color expert, this is a great way to get started. If you are, you know, a colorist or just really good with color, maybe you never use this. Or maybe you're trying to match shots, match between cameras, match against a reference. This is just a good way to get you there a little faster. And then you still have full editability, which is really awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look and get started. All right, let's go ahead and bounce over to my screen here. In the latest update of Premiere Pro, there have been several in the last month. I'm sure you've noticed if you've been on Creative Cloud, uh, looking in your icon, your desktop there, you've had quite a few updates, updates on updates. Uh, nothing new here, particularly in color, but again, just to be on the latest and greatest, if you haven't updated in the last month or so, there's something waiting for you, unless you're mid-production, in which case I typically don't recommend to do anything. <laughs> All right, MIT Solution, how are you? Pat Hamer, great to see you. Black Pearl Productions from Trinidad, nice to see you as well. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and start. So what we have here, uh, we are currently um, in what's called the comparison view. Now, this was something that was introduced in Premiere uh, about a year and a half ago. New icon here, if you don't see this icon uh, among your various buttons, you can add it in the button editor. If you don't want to add any additional buttons, you can also engage the comparison view right here from color wheels and match inside of the Lumetri color panel. So Lumetri color uh, has multiple modules. We're in the color wheels and match module, which was redesigned, again, about 18 months or so ago. I'm also using the color workspace, which automatically reveals Lumetri. So if you're into using any of our preset workspaces, this is where you'll find it. Of course, you can always add it directly from the window menu right here. Okay. So the way that this works is uh, on the left, we have our reference. And in this case, this is some footage that I shot. I was in Alaska recently. And uh, this is just a, a very quick little scene here. Uh, while driving a ranger through an area called Hatcher Pass. Truly some of the most amazing landscapes, amazing countryside I've ever seen in my entire life. And you can see the time of day, this is sort of golden hour here, although it's later in the day because this was in early July. It virtually never gets dark there. Um, but we just had that beautiful golden sun. And on the right here, I have the current frame that I'm wanting to match against this Alaska frame. So this is some Adobe stock content. Actually, I believe this was shot in Santa Cruz. So you can see you've got your reference over here on the left, all right? And you have your own little scrubber, your own little time code here. And then you have your current shot that you're trying to match against on the right, okay? Very simply. Under color wheels and match, you'll see that you have a couple things that you can do here. Now, if you've got faces, we use Adobe Sensei based face detection. Now this is gonna come up in a moment when we're matching against shots from different cameras where we have some faces. In this case, no faces, so we're going to uncheck this box. And then if I wanna match these shots together, all right, if I wanna take the color and the light and that time of day feeling from this shot here in Alaska and apply it to Santa Cruz, California, I'm going to simply click on apply match and Sensei is going to do its thing. It's going to, wow, that happened so quickly. It's going to analyze 
the shot. It's going to look at the color and light and then do its best to match and apply a very similar look right away. Now, honestly, <laughs> it did it so fast, I'm actually kind of shocked. It looks pretty awesome. Now, up at the top of the Lumetri color panel, you have a bypass toggle here. So we can see quickly the before. So it just had this real magenta pinkish hue. And this is where I struggle because as a non-colorist, affecting shadows, midtones, and highlights, I mean, I could probably get there, but it would just take me a while because I don't know what I would touch first. Shadows first, maybe? Maybe highlights, a combo, I don't, I don't know. So this just gets me there faster. So here's the before, here's the after, and it just, you can see, particularly in the rocks, in the foreground, it just really picks up that earthy, those earthy green tones, and most importantly, beautifully matches the color and the hue of that golden hour sun. Now what's really awesome and what's a key point about this color match feature or shot match feature is that this is one, it's creating effectively a LUT for you, but more importantly, this is not a black box fix. This is fully editable. So if I wanted to come in here and let's say I wanted to add a little bit more warmth in those midtones, all right, or affect contrast of those midtones, I have full editability here. As you can see, as I'm dragging this slider, right, to really bring this down. Okay, maybe emphasize a little bit more, maybe add a little bit more greenish yellow into those mid-tones, something like that. Ooh, that even seems, that might even be a little bit better. Maybe add a little bit more warmth into the highlights there. Yeah, and you have multiple views where you can sort of compare uh, splitting your screen to really see if you've kind of nailed that color. So down here at the bottom of comparison view, right now we're in the side-by-side -side view, but you'll see we also offer a vertical split and a horizontal split. Now I love the horizontal split because you can see now we have this center line, right? So this is gonna tell you at the top of the screen, look, this is so awesome. I mean, this is really what makes this so cool. So at the top, above this blue or cyan line, this is Alaska. And at the bottom, this is Santa Cruz. So you can see now I can move these two. All right, here's all Santa Cruz. Here's Alaska. But when it was right there in the center, look at the mountain right here and look at the water and the rocks. It feels, if you didn't see that Adobe stock, it would almost seem like there was some weird, you know, uh, uh, mountain or, or structure sandbar in the water right there. It almost looks like this is the actual shot. Now, if I disable this, now you can very clearly see, oh, wow, there's the before, right? Here's the after. Holy cow, right? Super significant. Let's go to the, um, the vertical side by side. So again, this is where we might take a look at those hues in the sun. I mean, you know, as a non-color pro, in four seconds, maybe three seconds, this is pretty amazingly close for me. Now you may take it a little bit further. You've got that flexibility. Again, we can always do that before and after. So dramatic to see those changes. But in a single click, this did most of that work for me and really got me just about all the way there. Really, really cool, really awesome and significant. Okay, let's, uh, let's undo this. Let's go for a different look entirely. So I've got another shot here. Uh, this is from another area along Hatcher's Pass up in Alaska. And again, now this one, totally different time of day, right? You can see we've got this very blue sky, green mountains. And once again, I want to change that color and feel and hue of this Santa Cruz shot. So once again, I'll select it here. I'll go into apply match. Sensei does its thing. It analyzes, still analyzing. Good time for me to take a sip here. This one's taking a little longer, a lot longer. <laughs> Enormously longer? What's happening? Why is it not matching right now? You can do it. You can do it. Oh, I have it off. That's why. Let me try analyzing it again. I had it disabled. Aha, there we go. Okay, always helps to have the effect turned on, friends. User error. Whoa. All right. Now, again, you may say, well, that looks more blue. Well, of course, there's not a lot of green in this ocean shot, but this is where, once again, I take my horizon here and I go, all right, does this look like it's from the same scene? Look at the low lights here. Look at the shadows in the blue and look at the sky. Yeah, 
look at the clouds here. Look at the detail in these clouds and the sort of earthy brown tones, which, by the way, that was smoke from recent fires in Alaska. Look at the reflections on the rocks. We're actually, we're introducing, you can see there's some brown, there's some earth tone there. Let's undo. There's the before. Now, it's funny, at the clouds right now, this looks like this could be okay, but as you reveal more of this, it doesn't work at all, right? No, 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 you could tell it's way off. Turn it back on. Oh, look at that. It actually feels like this could have been similar time of day in completely different landscapes. By the way, I also want to point out, now I'm on an iMac, uh, a souped up iMac 2017. This is all 4K content here. You'll notice that moving the horizontal and vertical dividers there, really smooth and fluid. This is thanks to a lot of updates that we've done to metal GPU acceleration in Mac OS in recent versions. So you're gonna feel that if you're working in comparison mode. So this is super cool and again, really effortless to get your shots very, very close and always fully editable after the fact. And if you wanted to, you could once again come up here and you could either export that as a look you could save a preset that will contain any modifications that you've made in the entire Lumetri panel here, or you can even export individual settings here as a dot cube to be used elsewhere. So you've got a lot of flexibility in how you can create and work with this color on subsequent footage or sequences inside of Premiere or even outside of Premiere. All right, cool. Let's bounce over to the chat real quickly. See what we've got going on here. Just Samson, how's it going? Jörg Michaelis, good evening from Cologne. All right, SPD TDL, <laughs> nice to see you. NetTube user, very nice to see you as well, thank you. All right, and going back over here to the Facebooks. Ruben from Peru, hello. Samson from Ghana. Am I a bit dark, Ariel? You know, it's, it's interesting you say that, Ariel. I'm a bit dark today. So uh, I haven't been streaming in a while and I I kind of, I changed a couple things. I had a studio session before uh, our Adobe shutdown ended and I had to change lights around. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't put them back exactly the way they were. So I realized that I'm like, oh, I'm kind of a slightly more in shadow, but I like, I like where you've taken it. A little film noir style. I can go with that. All right, Karim, Stepan, Hector, nice to see you. Jake Halak, ah, oh, great to see you again. Claudio, ciao, Donald, all right. All right, Bogdan, now you're right. It doesn't always work. You know, Bogdan makes a point. Sometimes it's not going to do it for you. It's an auto function, right? We have auto in lots of things. We have auto in Lightroom CC. You have auto functions all over the CC apps. Sometimes it's magic, sometimes it's not. This is my own footage, just saw it, shot weeks ago. I gave it a try and it worked well. Is it always going to do that? No, that's just the reality but it's fully editable and many times it's gonna get you almost all the way there. And that's kind of the needed, the needed thing here. Slowpoke Rodriguez, thank you. Dinu, hello. Paul Neal, living on the edge. Nick Mantis, you could use this, awesome. Sandy Chu, hi, hi. Alessio, all right. Well, wow, many people tuning in from all parts of the world today, always lovely. Karthik, Gina from North Carolina, welcome. Jake Helbach, will this work while editing a multicam sequence? Absolutely. Now, there's different uh, different workflows that you may want to implement in terms of where you do your matching. Um, in other words, I probably wouldn't do the match in the multicam cut sequence. I would do it in that master assembly sequence. But absolutely, sure, same thing can apply. And of course, you could even create a look like this to match against cameras and apply it to an adjustment layer if you wanted um, across everything too. All right, Katan, hi, Costas, Tony, Jay from the Philippines, Finley Peace, Jay from Mumbai, one of my favorite places in the land. Very cool, okay, Salvador Jimenez, all right. Oh my God, Matt Easton, Matt Easton is watching. Oh my God. Director extraordinaire, how are you doing, dude? Oh my God. <laughs> what uh, an enormous joy to have you on the stream. Wow, super cool. All right, you can check out many of Matt's videos, lots of his work from previous Adobe Lives, as well as looking at the catalog of Imagine Dragons videos, including Believer, among many others. The man's a master, he's a master of light and color and story. And, uh, 
has a fantastic voice as well. Also, just a great human. Okay. Matt Blankenship, is there a place where all of these videos are available after the stream? Uh, yes, you can catch all of them and watch any of the replays directly on Premiere Pro Facebook, uh, as well as my YouTube channel, Jason Levine video, and many others. Ah, uh, Matt, you're too kind. All right. And Yasin from Algeria. All right, so let's move on real quickly here to um, matching. Oh, that's a reference. Okay, we'll come back to that. Matching shots where you have the same shot, but with different cameras, okay? So this is another really common, common use for um, color matching or shot matching. So here you can see on the left, again, we have camera A, which I think this may have been, I wanna say this was a Panasonic camera over here. And this is ultimately the look that we wanted. This, this in fact, was how that light was represented. And on the right here, this is, I believe this was shot with red. Actually, I, I can see by the file name, it was in fact red. Um, and it just has this kind of green haze over top of it, all right? So again, for someone who's not a colorist, who's not a color professional, tackling this at all, I mean, I could probably get there, but I could probably get there, but what's gonna happen to the skin tone? You know, this is always the first thing that tends to go, to go the wrong way for me because I'm just, I don't, I didn't study color theory. I know, I know how to get there eventually, but I don't have any real, <laughs> I don't have a real skill. I don't have like go-to knowledge there. I just kind of know from watching and getting inspired by others how to play around. But I'm not an expert and it would take me forever. So here we're going to leverage the Adobe Sensei based face detection and click on apply match. Now, done this a couple times. We'll see how it goes. Remember the result, it's, it's Sensei, it's machine learning, it's AI. So it's never gonna be twice the same Let's go ahead and analyze it. Let's see what it does. Now, it definitely brightened up the shot. It sort of removed a bit of that green haze, but it's not, I'm not quite getting enough of that magenta in there. So here's where, again, just taking a look at this, now I can say, all right, let's come over to the midtones and maybe just start introducing a little bit of that pinkish magenta hue, okay? Ever so slightly. Now you may, you know, I can take it. I like to go sort of extreme, see how far I'm pushing it. Actually, that looks, that doesn't look too bad. Maybe it's a little warm, in fact, okay? And if you've got you know, some kind of uh, a tangent device or something to control your color with, you'll be a little bit more accurate than I am with my mouse here. All right, let's do something like that. And then maybe we'll pull the highlights in a little bit as well, okay? So again, I'm looking at the sky here. I'm looking at the sky to make sure that we maintain enough of that blue, but also enough of that sort of natural pinkish magenta skin tone. So if we go into our Horizontal split, right? This is what I love. Okay, here's our sky. Take note of all of the hues, right, that we're seeing. So we're seeing blue and we're seeing cyan and we're seeing a bit of that pink and magenta and a little bit of earth tone brown. When I see that reflecting on her face right here, that looks pretty right to me. Again, here's the before, not even close. Here's the after. Right? It feels right. Look at the light, the brightness. I'm looking at the highlights here. These highlights in the, in, the, in the corners feel very similar to me. If we do a side by side, all right? Now this one again, we're slightly more in shadow here, so it's a little harder to deduce. But as we move towards the blue hues, the sky, look at the sky here in the corner. Look at the sky right here. This feels really good to me. Now, is it, is it perfect? Probably not. Again, I'm not, is this monitor even calibrated? <laughs> You get the idea, okay? Here's our before, so not even close. Here's the after. You know, for me, that's pretty darn good. That's pretty close, and I'd be pretty happy with that. And now these, these shots from different cameras can feel similar, feel the same, and it's not gonna break your story because there's gonna be such noticeable changes um, in the color grade, okay? So that's matching between shots. Again, same method as before. By the way, you have the ability, if you so desire, uh, I always keep the reference on the left and the shot that, we're match that we want to match against or match to on the right. You can also flip these around. You have this swap side option here. So if you want you know, your current frame on the left and your reference on the right, however you like it, you can do that real easily inside of the comparison view. Okay, and the very last thing that I'm gonna show you here. So sometimes, Right, you have a video like my Alaska content that you that has that color that you want to apply to your own. Other times, you've got, you're trying to match against cameras. Right, common problem. I just shot again. I had a session here in the studio. Three camera shoot, two iPhones and an Android. 
no surprise, the Android was different than the iPhones. The iPhones were almost identical, same, same era, iPhone 10, iPhone X, uh, but the Android was, was a little bit different, so we had to match between those. Sometimes, however, you're like, you know what, I shot this stuff, it looks great, but I want it to look like my favorite film, or uh, perhaps a reference image, right? So you can see here, uh, I don't have, I'm not distributing this, so this is just a shot that I grabbed off of our friend Google here from um, uh, the new Blade Runner, and I just love the look of this. I just want this kind of a look applied to my deserty scene here. So you can apply this against any reference image. It can be from your camera roll. It can be from anything. It doesn't have to be, does it have to be in 4K? No, it can be a very small image. Obviously, the more pixels, the better the color depth in general, even if it's a JPEG, is going to behoove you in terms of matching. But Sensei is going to do that work. So once again, we can see we've got my reference on the left. Here's my, uh, here's my hero shot on the right. We're going to leverage face detection again. I'm going to click Apply Match. It's going to do its analysis. And right away, it gets us pretty close. Now again, it went a little blue. It's funny, I just did this on this frame and it seemed to pull out a bit more of that magenta in the midtones. So again, I might, I might tweak those midtones a bit to bring a bit more of that pinkish magenta in there because you can see there's lots of that resonating here, right? We can see if we just zoom into the corners here, right? And now when you take a look, look at this little light leak right here. We're seeing more of that pinkish magenta hue, okay? Suddenly, again, look at her skin tone here, and look at Harrison Ford, and look at that very nice vein. The man is very ripped for 70, all right? Goals, hashtag goals, right? Before, so not even close. And this is the kind of thing where I'm the first to say, honestly, maybe I could do this manually? <laughs> I mean, probably not. Maybe. It would take a long time. And it would, honestly, I'd be more frustrated because I just, I'd be like, why? Why is it not close enough? After, okay? Side by side, all right? Looks pretty good. Again, maybe in the highlights, I bring in a little bit more blue. There seems to be still a little bit of warmth in there. Maybe a little more green. So I wanna bring those highlights into those cooler tones. Again, up and down, a little vertical split there. I mean, horizontal split. That's feeling pretty good when I look at the highlights. And then our side by side like this, okay? Really cool. As mentioned, it's not always going to do it every time. It will shock you. And if nothing else, it can really assist, particularly where skin tones are concerned, to get you most of the way there, all right? So that is the, I almost said the new, it's not new, it's been in there for quite a while now, uh, color match, auto color match for matching cameras, camera to camera, matching against another type of video, video sequence, video frame, or a still image right inside of the Premiere Pro timeline, all right? You can save them, you can export them, export as looks.cube, presets to use elsewhere. Yes, this can be applied as a preset to multiple clips or adjustment layers. So if you have the same camera, right, and you wanted to match to something like that, you could do the match one time, create a preset, and then just apply that preset to everything, and it will do the job for you, all right? Uh, that one's really dramatic. I like that one a lot. Okay, so let's bounce back uh, to the chat here. Take a last, last couple of questions. All right. I can't believe Matt Easton was here. That's amazing. I don't know if you're still here, Matt. Dude, long time no see. Wow. Uh, Farhan, okay. Mornay. Mornay Andrews, nice to see you. Fazl Rabbi Shilby, nice to see you as well. Mikael from Estonia, Matt Blankenship, my pleasure. Niru, hello, Deepu. Claudia Valenzuela from Orlando. All right. Vicky Barton LeBlanc, have you ever seen any real issues with MacBook Pro screen needing to be calibrated? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, so it, you know, it depends. Now, here's the thing, since we've added, um, did I move my screen over? Yes. Since we added, uh, what's it called now? Um, color management to the preferences, which by the way, since you brought that up, maybe it's worth showcasing that real quickly. Just a moment here. Oh, thank you, ASN83. Glad you enjoyed that. 
Uh, we added color management for display color management. Is it in general? Let's see here. Yes. Um, since we added this, this certainly assists in effectively showcasing to you on screen, like in this case, if it's a P3 monitor or, or whatever, uh, the correct color when you're in Premiere and when you're outside of Premiere. And what you're seeing on the scopes, if you're using our Lumetri scopes, should be exactly what you're actually seeing on screen. Now, having said that, of course, calibration um, on any monitor, if you're going to be doing, you know, proper color grading, is is a good idea. I, I'm, I'm again, this is not my expertise, but you know, if you've got some weird color profile on your MacBook, which again, it, you have many to choose from there, um, you might be doing yourself a disservice or others for that matter, because perhaps, you know, you may notice that some of your colors just either aren't as vibrant or maybe they're too much or maybe they're skewed or the gamma can be slightly off. Um, there's many, many reasons for calibration. You know, the MacBook Pros with their, if you've got one of the newer ones, and those are, I think, P3, uh, pretty good displays. You know, a lot of people I know who do professional color, they don't even worry about calibration because they know what they're seeing, right? So it's kind of one of those things too. If, if calibration is something that terrifies you, you know, you could also make the argument today that if you export something and you look at it in YouTube, on Facebook and Vimeo, and it looks good and it looks right, and then maybe you watch it via a smart TV or Apple TV and you're like, yeah, these colors look amazing. Well, then that's it, you know. But, you know, pros are gonna say, of course, yes, calibration is necessary, just like setting reference levels for mixing audio is a necessity. Most people I know these days don't do it. I do it because, you know, I'm old school in that way, but it doesn't mean you can't get a great result. So that's a really great question. And uh, my good friend Simon Walker has, uh, he does a lot of stuff for Red Giant. And Simon's often in the streams here. I would, uh, I would Google his name, uh, Vicky, and I believe he's got some videos on calibration. Richard Harrington may have some of those too. Uh, I'm sure the name's escaping. There's a couple others. Uh, Robbie, Robbie Carman is another, C-A-R-M-A-N, tons of stuff there. Robert Giofo, can you apply this to the entire sequence in one click? No, so this is, the matching is shot to shot, okay? But you could, assuming you're wanting to match multiple shots against the single reference, that's where you could create that preset as I showed you, and, uh, and then you could apply that preset to multiple clips simultaneously. So the shot match happens on a single clip, but you could then apply it to multiples after the fact, okay? All right. Morning, Andrews, neat video, best noise removal plugin ever. Yes, were you asking me about that? Oh, Katan was asking. That's funny, somebody asked me that on my YouTube channel yesterday. Um, I mean, I'm a huge fan of neat video. There are many others, Red Giant makes one, dozens of others out there. Neat, I've been using them since I think 2008. Wow, 11 years, they're just amazing. And they just had, they had an update not long ago for Premiere. It's GPU accelerated. You have so much editability and editable functions. Uh, it's, it's magnificent and it's reasonably priced. So yeah, if you're looking to do noise reduction, um, definitely great. Art Fitzsimmons, modern calibration is why SMPTE was invented, especially color bars. Yeah, e exactly. And again, you know, depending on what you're doing, where it's going, the level of production here, you know, this is why you shoot, you know, color charts and things, especially if you don't have ideal lighting. I mean, there's, there's so many reasons to do it. If you're going to professional broadcast, of course, you want things calibrated. So like I said, lots of options there. Okay, uh, Asar from India, already applied Lumetri, how to fast render red cam footage. Well, uh, I don't really have an answer for you there. I mean, depending upon what you're doing, of course, if you're working with preview files and, um, you know, doing some in the timeline style renders, your renders, your final renders will be much faster. Um, if you're going to H.264 or 5, in which case you don't need to maintain highest bit depth, bit depth during your export, you'll have a faster render. There's lots of options there. And I've talked about this on a couple of different streams. So if you want to ping me on Twitter, we can have a chat about that. All right. All right. Black Pearl Productions. This is beautiful, man. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Content creator. Thank you. For my life. Very dramatic. Uh, Just Samson, do I have a tutorial on how I stream this content? You know, I don't, but so many people have been asking about that. 
Maybe I will. Maybe I'll talk about my stream setup. I know that's that's a thing that a lot of people talk about uh, uh, on Twitch, so this might be worth it. Umer, love you too. Thank you. Jacob Bruder, greetings from Germany. All right. Netubute, maybe adding a blurry line in the middle between the two shots can be a help also. I mean, yeah, absolutely. You can always, you know, you can use your own overlays too. Christopher Pendy, watching on vacation in Cape May. <laughs> well, that's very nice. Thank you. Albert Johnson, how are you? Fo my life, did they add more multi-threading in recent update? <laughs> Interesting stuff going on with multi-threading. All right, TM, Martin is here to learn as always. Pedro Pena, greetings from Chile. Umer Jami, uh, how to replace a logo in the video on girls' t-shirt, please tell me. Well, uh, that's kind of a separate, a separate stream, but if you look at one of my recent streams on using masking and tracking, um, it teaches you how to mask something like a logo on a shirt, how to mask it out effectively. You could invert it, you could blur it, and then using those tracking points, if you wanted to, uh, easiest way would be to send it to After Effects, and then you could apply a new logo over top of it. Um, lots of different ways to do that, Omer, but again, different uh, different stream for that. Okay. Inner Peace Monitor. Oh, yes, and Premiere Gal, of course, has lots of stuff on color matching as well. My good friend Kelsey. Motion Designer MD. All right. Thank you, Black Pearl. You're very welcome. Okay. Looks like that's it for our comments coming over here. All right. Kizzo from New York. Kizzo. Rhymes with Lizzo, listening to a bunch of Lizzo earlier. All right, Takumatan, Tom Linnick, George Oliver, Kimaru Mu, Iowa Boy One, JK Hooper. All right, Soba from DRC Congo. ASN, 220 AM Tuesday, but I can't sleep because I must see your tutorial, love you. Ah, well, that is one of the kindest things ever. I hope the dulcet tones of my voice may help lull you to sleep. <laughs> All right. Lionel. Oh, this is great. I love hearing comments like this. Very timely. Perfect. All right. Alexander, watching while delivering cuts from Adobe Premiere to Netflix. Awesome. I mean, this is the stuff I love here. This is so amazing. I'm so grateful to all of you. Arturo. On muchos casos, much color, no funciona. So you're having issues? You're not, it's not functioning for you? Now again, be sure, like me, to make sure that you didn't disable or bypass the color. And I want to just mention again, um, you know, it doesn't always get it every time. You know, you might have some shots, especially if the reference is not the best, lighting isn't ideal. Sometimes it's just, it's off a little bit. I can also tell you though, honestly, that the color match I've found is more effective on the first try. Uh, in recent updates. Also, little little point, you might try changing the frame of the video that you're trying to match. In other words, you might have your matched frame, you have the reference on the left, that's exactly what you want. But where it's matching on your current footage, try scrubbing to a different frame and try matching that. Again, you will get different results. Um, it, uh, you know, there's lots of, there's lots of, op there's lots of, what am I trying to say? It's an AI engine, right? So something different in that current frame might spark a different type of skew towards, you know, a warmer or cooler tone. So just something to try there. And I know, I'm sorry, it doesn't, it doesn't always get it, but you know, when it does. <laughs> and when it doesn't, then you throw your coffee at the monitor, like I do, all right, maybe. All right, last question here. Mohammed from Egypt, hello. Um, Nura Sultan, your computer has started to struggle more with 2019 version. Previous was more stable. What could be the reason for that? You know, uh, I will tell you, Nura Sultan, some people have reported this. We've done a lot to improve performance and stability. I don't know if you're up on the latest, latest. Again, I mentioned there have been already two or three updates in the last month and a half. Um, I would recommend going to the latest, latest if you haven't. It really depends on what you're doing, and there's many best practice things that you can implement to try and assist in, in stability. I know people found 2017 or early 2018 to be their fave. Um, we hear you and we're working on it, and we're trying to improve performance and stability with every subsequent update, all right? All right, last question. All right, 
Arturo, de nada. All right, uh, Chanuk, what's the fastest way to color match a lengthy video with lots of different clips? Um, well, again, if if all the different clips have like, if they're all different, <laughs> you know, you may have to, that would be a, that would be a, a moment where in here, I'm going to show you this real quickly because that's a great question. And it also leads to another feature that we can kind of highlight here. Uh, let me see if I can get to my media folder. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what have we got? I'm just looking for something that has lots of media sources. Oh, that's sound effects. I don't want that. Um, Adobe Stock. Okay, this isn't a lot of clips, but all right. So this is this is what we call freeform view. So if you had a lot of clips that you need to match, but you know, six clips are kind of this hue, six clips are this hue, and six clips are this look, but you have the one that you want to match them to. One thing that I would probably recommend is in freeform view, which you can access via this button at the bottom of your um, the bottom of your panel, you can see here, so you have your icon view, list view, freeform view, you could sort of group your content together. See, so these two have the same, the same look, and maybe these two have a similar look, and this one has its own look. And so that way, at least you know, all right, I have three looks, I need to match only three videos, and maybe create a preset. So I'd have the, you know, sunset match as a preset, I'd have the uh, drone water, you know, whatever, you'd have to give it a creative name so that you can follow it. And then the uh, the daytime sunrise look over here, and then apply those to multiple clips. So th th there's lots of different ways to do it. It just depends on how much footage you have. But just remember that the color matches clip to clip. All right. Cool. All right. Naeem, ProRes 422 or 444 better for color grade? You know, um, like anything, obviously 444, it, it, that's, that's the highest level resolution you can get in terms of ProRes. If you're doing 422 HQ, um, I know a lot of people who work in 422 HQ, it's still, you know, greater than 8-bit, right? So you're in the 10, 12-bit mode there. Um, it's going to grade beautifully. You know, really why you'd want something like 444 if you're gonna be working with alpha channel and stuff like that. And perhaps there's other considerations, um, specifically maybe if you're doing really specific things with HDR perhaps, or I'm not, I'm not even entirely sure uh, where, where, the, where the separation begins. But for most applications, and to save you a little space, I mean, I use 422HQ and I only go 444 um, if it requires alpha channel. Maybe I'm doing myself a little bit of a disservice there. Um, but for my work, you know, I, 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 I'm not seeing a, an incredibly significant difference for the stuff I'm doing, right? So you may be able to find more about that, uh, I'm sure, online. And again, look at, uh, I, again, recommend Simon Walker. He can probably tell you exactly the differences there, okay? All right. Yes, Daniel, this will be available immediately. I actually can watch it right now on Facebook and on my YouTube channel, Jason Levine Video, which I will go ahead and stick in the chat here. And then we're going to end the stream. All right. So I thank you so much. Get that in there for you. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll be back on tomorrow. Did I spell that right? I'll be back on tomorrow around the same time, possibly in After Effects, possibly an audition. It's a live stream, so I never know exactly what I'm going to showcase. Later this week, I will also be showcasing, actually, neat noise reduction. So a lot of people have been asking about noise reduction for video. It happens to be one of my favorite plugins. There are many available out there, lots of options. This is just one that I've been using. So I'm going to take you through that. Until then, if you've got additional questions or features that you want to see on the live streams, be sure to hit me at Beetlejace on Twitter or on YouTube as well. I answer all requests that come in, all comments, all questions. So until then, have a great rest of your morning, day, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world, and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.